Hey, welcome everybody. What's up? This is Doran Aldana, and this is another live episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. We've got a very special episode for you guys today with the one and only Pete Fakaisen. And we're going to be talking about the power of creating, cultivating deep, stick to you like super glue loyalty with top producing agents. And how the hell do you do that? That's almost probably sounds like a pipe dream to some of you, perhaps even most of you. It probably even sounds like, you know, we're uh, we're talking about some Disneyland character or the Loch Ness monster. You know, you hear about it, you talk about it, but you never actually see it. This thing called realtor loyalty. So, how do you build and craft and cultivate deep rooted, sticky like super glue realtor loyalty? without kissing ass, without cold calling, without bribing them, without chasing them, without you know paying for their Zillow leads or any other online bunk lead program out there. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna to be with the one, the only, Pete Fakaisen. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, I've had the pleasure and privilege of coaching uh, Pete Fakaisen for the last, I don't know, year and a half or so. And when he came to me, he was making a big transition. He was going from being in the in-house with a big realtor, um, you know, agency with a whack load of agents. And he was just going crazy, working, you know, insane hours, trying to hurt all those cats, dealing with all their demands and commands. And he was making great money, but he was frustrated as hell, pulling his hair out. And he's kind of like me, you know, he didn't want to be, uh, you know, going through the trouble and struggle of self-inflicted torture forever. He wanted to find a better way of doing things. And uh, he jumped ship. He had a non-compete. He had to start from scratch. And to make a long story short, he went from zero to hero in a hurry. He's done just shy of a billion dollars in production over the years. Uh, he's a bona fide, certified, qualified veteran in the business. This guy knows his stuff. <coughs> and uh, you're going to find out in short order that uh, he is indeed the real deal when it comes to attracting solid partnerships, not relationships, partnerships, where the realtor literally will send all their business all the time, put Coach Pete, as we like to call him, Coach on Pete. their speed dial and send all their business, exclusivity partnerships. He's one of the best in the business for teaching you guys how to do that. So without further ado, Coach Pete, thanks for hanging with us, us brother. It's looking hey, forward brother, to this thank conversation. You so thank you for the uh, accolades, much appreciated. Um, yeah, man, you know, you changed uh, my thinking and it couldn't have been, you know, better time for me lifestyle wise. I was working a hundred hours a week. I was abused. No, just kidding. I wasn't abused. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, um, I was, I was working a lot and, um, you know, I didn't have time for my three little boys, my boat, my golden retriever, my wife, uh, my house, my landscaping. I mean, all my passions, you know, were just, it was just work, work, work. So, you know, I thank you and applaud you for uh, helping, helping me get over that hump because if not, I'd still be doing the same thing. So, um, but less about me, let's talk about relationships. So. Absolutely. You know, whether it be your realtor, your lover, or lover, um, your you know, <laughs> that's how they say it. That's how they say it out in Boston, right? Lover. Yeah, lover. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have an accent though, so let's uh, let's not let's not go. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're so. not representing properly. Yeah. No, I'm you're not. Gonna I'm do born, it, you gotta do it. You got to do it properly. And I'm, and I'm born here too, but a couple years out in uh, Colorado, really. I guess yeah, digging that, deep. That'll that'll soften you up pretty quick. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I you know, these things don't come overnight. They, you know, it's it's not something that, you know, you do one deal and the expectation is you're gonna get a hundred. Um, you know, I think relationships are earned, number one. Um, you know, I think partnerships are earned. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of people in today's business that go out and they look at relationships as, well, you know, I did a great job or I had the lowest rate or I was, um, I got your deal closed in, in 20 days, right? I see all these different things posted all over the internet from all these different loan officers about how great they are. 
But I think the biggest thing in partnership, and one of the things you taught me, Doran, and what I learned, you know, working in house with a real estate company for 10 years is in order to be a partner, it's a give and give. It's not a give and just, it's not just receive. And I think us as loan officers, we do a great job. We expect more referrals, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, we can expect more referrals if we're doing the right things after that that deal closes, right? So, you know, I, there's a process to this, and we've gone over it a lot of times. Um, you know, with our students, we've gone over. I've gone over it with a lot of my employees. There's a process to you know, gaining a partnership. Sometimes it takes a year. Sometimes it takes a couple deals. But you know, you know, a partnership is you know meeting with meeting with your uh, partner. You know, let's say biweekly. You know, that's one of the things that we preach. You know, you really want to make sure that you're ingrained in the culture of your partnership. If you see somebody once every two months, you're probably gonna not do a lot of business with them, right? No. no. So, um, so I'd say number one thing is a partnership is you know having a schedule in which you're gonna see that person, kind of like, you know, your spouse, your 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 life partner you know, whoever that may be, you know, you see them every day, hopefully, right? Or you see them, you know, a as part of your existence of where you live, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with business. You have to apply this partnership where you're going to book time to see them. Maybe it's grab a beer, but you don't have to pick up the bill every time. Maybe it's go for oysters. Maybe it's, um, you know, uh, meet someone at a ball game. Um, maybe it's go, inviting someone to a social event, like a networking deal. Maybe go play golf. Right. Like one of my partners just invited me out to a charity event. Um, there you but go. It, it's really, it can't always be about business. You're going to talk business naturally with a partner, but mm -hmm. you got to include the fun. You got to include the lifestyle of what you you know want out of that partnership. And, Absolutely. you know, don't get me wrong, man. I've got 10, 15 core partners, right? And, you know, our partnership, you know, the, the other key to the partnership is you have to have an agreement of what are the expectations, right? So, Absolutely. you know, so expectations are a huge piece to a partnership. What, are, what, are, what am I going to expect from you when I give you leads? Wait, wait, a, a mortgage person is going to give a realtor leads? Yes. What do I expect? Well, I expect you to do a good job. I expect you to, you know, follow the process that we work together on every other deal. I don't want, don't give anybody any special treatment. This is, you know, it, again, it's, it's, it's giving and receiving, you know, you can't just put your hand out all the time. And by the way, partnerships on our side work with that the same way with realtors. You can't just give, we are in the, you know, we're in the service business as a mortgage originator, right? And the thing is, if you give your real estate partner everything, they're just going to keep taking and taking and taking and taking mm -hmm. without doing something. And by the way, legally with a lot of this stuff, you, 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 you have to contribute. So do they. Uh, like advertising, you can't just pay for someone's ad, right? You have to split it according to the law, right? Right, and right, right. That out. And it's got to have the correct information on it. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, uh, you know, partnerships. Um, I'll, I'll give you a couple examples. Um, I'd say one of my best partnerships that I have right now. Um, I didn't do any business with this person in the prior twelve to eighteen months. Someone I had reconnected with. I actually didn't even know they were in the business, and. Next thing you know, I brought to them some new ideas about marketing, right? Um, didn't give them anything. I offered to help them advertise on Facebook. I offered to help them set up a CRM. I offered to help them with, you know, some open houses, not just open house sheets, but open houses, help them work an open house, check people in. That stuff is value to an agent, right? I also mm -hmm. was able to, um, you know, offer them some business to business relationships. Okay. Where I was able to send them six deals. So in 12 months or last year, I did 31 deals with that one agent. I mean, wow. That, yeah. And that, that's, 
Think about that for a moment, guys. Think about that for a moment. When's the last time you got over 10 leads or 10 deals done in a year from one agent, let alone 30 plus? This is the difference, guys, between going narrow, deep, and rich with just a few top dog, real deal, synergistic, reciprocating, all-in partners versus going wide and shallow and anemic with a bunch of drama queen chumps that aren't committed, that aren't loyal, that don't refer you exclusively, who don't even do that much business, who couldn't even send you that much business even if they wanted to. Notice he's specifically targeting higher producers. He's adding so much unique value. That's the key word there. Unique value, compelling value, meaningful value that this guy is all in. He's not half ass. He's not tepid. He's not lukewarm. He is all in. Yeah. When he says jump to his clients, his clients say how high. He doesn't ask where are you getting your pre-approval from. He says you need to get pre-approved through Pete Fakaisen. He's the only choice. He's yeah. the only option. You can look at other options later if you want, but you need to get pre-approved through Pete Fakaisen. Period. And so all in exclusive, deep, loyal partnership is where it's at, guys. That's where all the nectar is, all the gravy, all the affluence, all the fulfillment, all the fun, all the funds are in exclusive partnerships. Right. And yet you guys are taught to chase realtors, pound them through, you know, relentless cold calling until they finally throw up their hands and say, OK, I'll have a meeting. And you're taught to provide great rates and great service, and hopefully they'll throw you a bone. And then you wonder why they're not loyal. You wonder why they're a pain in the ass. You wonder why you love them and hate them at the same time, because you tolerate all kinds of bullshit you shouldn't be tolerating, because you're going about it the wrong way. You don't have enough unique value to command and demand that they send you all their business. You're just a Joe Schmo replaceable. Yeah. So talk to us about how to become irreplaceable and it's indispensable a little bit more, Coach Pete, because before, but until and unless you have that kind of posture, yep. you're going to be forever reaching out to realtors where they're not giving you the time of day, they're coming off as apathetic, they're hanging up on you, they're rejecting you, you feel like you're chasing them as opposed to them chasing you, you feel like you're giving up your dignity. You feel like it's you know cold calling hell every freaking Monday, reaching out to these guys. They don't want to hear from you. You might as well have a big sign on your forehead that says "Mortgage Parasite," right? right? Tell us about how to tell us about how to reverse that because this is the complete ass backwards way to do it. And yet, most mortgage professionals are being led astray with an old hat, completely archaic caveman method that just ain't working anymore. Yeah. Hey, uh, Scott, I see your question, by the way. If you hold on there, we'll answer that in a, in, a, in a minute. But, you know, I keep the stickiness again because I meet with them. I hold them accountable to meeting with me because it keeps it fresh. You know, I approach these agents like a friend, right? I want to, hey, I want to hang out with you. If we're going to do business together, I try to find people that are like me that, you know, have the same tendencies, want to be successful, um, you know, I've, I've helped agents grow a lot just because of my experience, because I've made their lives easier, right? So, you know, when you have all these things and you keep adding and layering the tools for them, again, I'm not going and talking to realtors about mortgage stuff. I'm going right. and talking about, Doran, how can you and I make more money together, my man? Okay. Mm -hmm. Or if you're the realtor, I'm saying, hey, Doran, you know, I think what you did this past year is great. Um, you know, so you did, we did 32 deals together or 30 deals together. That's awesome. How do we get to that next level? Mm -hmm. We mastermind together. We make a flow chart. We sit in a room and we start writing all over the walls on how we can do better. What part of our processes are our pain points? You know, one mm -hmm. of the best questions you could ask a realtor is what are your pain points? We as mortgage people know what their pain points are. I hate having people sign in at open houses. Hey, listen, any open house you have and you think you're going to have over 20 people, let me come help you. By the way, I don't want to talk mortgages at an open house. What buyer wants to talk about their financing in front of other strangers at a, right. at a place where they don't feel comfortable? 
it's like the oddest thing. People always ask me, can you come out, work the open house? I'm like, well, do we expect at least 20 people? Is it going to be really busy? I'll help you check people in. Or I'll have right. one of my, you know, team members come help check people in. But I don't want to be, I, I don't want to be there talking mortgage stuff. If someone has a mortgage question, I'll answer it. But I'm not going to have a pin that says Pete the mortgage guy on it. I'm going to be right. there as an adjunct to you, Doran. You're hosting right. the open house. I'm there to help you make money, man. And that's the way you approach it. Um, you you want to approach it that's so people want to work with you. You know, I'm in a real estate office the other day, and I and I told you this, Doran, where I'm sitting there and I went to this mastermind. There was 18 other lenders. There was more lenders in the mastermind, this Keller Williams office, than there were realtors almost. And I'm sitting right. there going, none of these people are doing business. And the realtor said, you come in this week. I said, no, I'm not. I said, I'm not there to give everyone my ideas, right? right. Let all, all these right. lenders figure out what we're doing. You know, and, and I said, I'd rather just meet with you one-on-one -on -one with your team and help your team get better, right? And, and well, how are we going to do that? I said, we're going to do our own mastermind. We're going to talk mm -hmm. about our successes. We're going to talk about our pain points. We're going to talk about one topic every week that makes all of us better working together. Mm -hmm. That's what a mastermind is. And I said, by the way, if we want to do something that I can help you bring in more recruits, we'll bring other people in and do a mastermind with that too. We'll do Brilliant. a young professionals mastermind or something. So, but but again, these are the ideas that you bring to try to garner a higher level of trust, a higher level than, by the way, while I was there, people are dropping off rate sheets. Don't drop off rate sheets until somebody requests it. I mean, right. give me a break. Is this, you know, people people are looking on their phones for rates, right? right. And, you know, what's what's your what's your rate? What's your, you know, no one's looking at that. You know, first time home buyer flyer or something like that per request. Let's stop printing paper for people. Half the stuff goes in the garbage. Work right. the open house. If you're going to drop off stuff, deliver it the day you show up to work at the open house and give people real tangible information or help them, you know, get in the door, help them sign in, add value. You know, mm -hmm. and I'd say the key to this, as we were talking about before, the key to a partnership is how are you going to add value compared to the person that they're using? Mm -hmm. right? And I think a, a big piece of the equation, Coach Pete, that a lot of people overlook is the metaphysical, is the emotional, spiritual transmission of certainty that you bring to the table. I mean, anyone can take words out of your mouth and try and parrot it out, but if they don't bring the Coach Pete Fakaisen uh, truth spot and mojo and certainty and confidence. It doesn't land the same. And let's be real. Top producing agents want to roll with other top producers. They want to roll yeah. with winners. They want to roll mm -hmm. with champions. They want to roll with leaders. They want to roll with overcomers, not whining, sniveling, complaining, jelly donut eating, you know, grovelers who yeah, sell sure. for mediocrity and feel sorry for themselves and complain about the rates and complain about their company and complain about the market and complain about the inventory and complain about this and complain about that. Who the hell wants to be around a complainer? Right. And so talk to us about the metaphysical side of cultivating certainty and cultivating confidence and cultivating the mindset that elicits loyalty from top producers. Because I think oftentimes people overlook that. Well, I think you, you definitely, you know, no matter what, no matter how bad rates get, I mean, we're in a business where we deal with the rates when the rates come. You, This is why we focus on purchase business. So we never have a problem. We don't rely on refinances, right? We rely on our past database. We rely on our new, on our partners. We try to form new relationships out there and we market, right? That's how you keep a continuous business. And by the way, if you have a book of business, I mean, you should be able to keep a continuous business just off that, okay? Um, but, you know, the the metaphysical part of this whole thing is that, again, I really try to be upbeat. I had one manager one time go out and present and introduce me in front of 50 realtors about four years ago. It says, you know, the one thing I like best about Pete is no matter how bad the market is, no matter how bad the circumstance yeah. is, He's always upbeat and is going to deliver something great for you. So, you know, not everyone could do that. It took me a while to do that. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I it's 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 something that you have to train your brain that I'm going to go out there and, you know, 
I could pitch a funeral to somebody, you know, and it's practice. It's overcoming objections, having the answers for people's questions, right? Or, hey, listen, one thing I've always taught my people, you don't know the answer? Hey, listen, I don't know the answer to that, but I'm gonna get back to you and you give them a definitive timeline of getting back to them with that answer. And it could be, hey, I'm getting back to you to let you know I still don't have your answer. But as long as you're delivering and you're getting back to people, that's the key. And it's and it's that confidence that you exude in, in what you're doing that that's, someone's gonna trust their commission with you, right? I mean, if, if you're if you're the person that comes in and complains about the rates and you know is sniffling because you got a cold or oh I gotta drive my kids here I gotta I gotta go to these meetings and take my parents or whatever your deal is don't share it no one wants to hear about it what we want to hear about is how are you gonna help us make more money how are you gonna be part of this team how are you gonna ingrain yourself in my culture of me making money. Okay, that's what it is. They don't want to don't care about the other stuff. I had a loan officer that worked with me years ago, and I said, I said, hey, listen, you know, this is a top agent. Oh, she's so ingrained, and you know, or he's so ingrained in getting his kids into school, and he's unfocused, and you know, um, this and that, and you know, can you make a can you make a change for us? And I'm like, yeah, we can make a change, but that's just been two years of this realtor. I mean, this uh, loan officer working in this office. You know, and then you try to talk to the loan officer, say, hey, listen, you got to make these changes. I understand you got some personal stuff, but relaying your personal stuff, unless it's, you know, unless it's empathy that you can use, Doran, empathy that you can use for, you know, doing good. Like, you know, um, I have an instance in my life where, uh, not personally, but let's, or we'll say personally, my mother passed away from cancer, right? So Mm -hmm. maybe I want to talk to people about that and have it relate to them about a charitable thing I'm doing. That is one way to use something that's happened to you that's spiritual, that is, you know, empathy. It's it's real, right? It's Mm -hmm. different than saying, oh, my kid's sick. He's always sick and being a complainer, right? It's Mm -hmm. I think if you can share that empathy with someone, you're definitely definitely going to gain their confidence, their, their current, their, their, their want to do business with you. Right. Yeah. So it reminds there, me, yeah. reminds me of uh, one of our seven figure lender Academy clients, Michael Chabot. I mean, that guy went through hell and back the last year. He lost his daughter, 14 year old daughter uh, due to complications of the flu. And, yeah. you know, She came back from school. She wasn't feeling well. She took a nap. She never woke up from her nap. I mean, I'm a dad of four kids. I can't even imagine the devastation, the heartbreak. He went through a whole year of wallowing in his suffering through that, understandably so. Um, And now he's decided to rise up and he's decided, okay, it's time to move on. It's time to redeem this pain and to create something out of it that allows her legacy to live on and to turn this breakdown into a breakthrough, to find a way to redeem the pain into my purpose. And uh, he, in the last, you know, in the last three weeks, he went from wallowing in his suffering and his pain and despair and was literally on the point of suicide several times to reigniting, taking cold showers, showing up powerful, showing, showing up, you know, at the gym at five in the morning, getting up early, rising and grinding, clanging and banging, learning and burning, all that good stuff. And uh, amazing how he's awakened. And just by that switch, he's attracted three top producing, top, uh, top talent uh, agent teams in the last three weeks. Yeah. Just because he's showing up with an energy of I'm coming to give, I'm not focusing on myself anymore. I'm not focusing on my my challenges and my sorrows anymore. I'm focusing on where I'm going, my purpose, and I'm focusing on giving and serving. And just that shift in energy, three top producing teams decided to go all in with him in the last three weeks just because that, of that shift in energy. That's yeah. the power of a shift in mindset. A hundred percent. And I think between Seven Figure Lender Academy and, you know, our accelerated uh, – formula as well 
um, all these students, you know, are going through major mindset changes and having a mindset change is everything I'm helping. Uh, I mean, I'm helping a realtor do this right now. Right. Also, you know, well, yeah, you know, the juice. well, you know, he, uh, he's a great realtor and you know, he's a former bartender. So he's a night owl goes to bed at 2 AM. He's got that clock, you know, gets up later in the day he said, Hey, I got to change my habits. He's getting married. He's doing a lot of things great for his life. And he said, you know, you know, what are we going to do? And, you know, I, he said, can you get, give me some, give me some things that I'm going to try to do in the morning. So he enrolled in Tom Ferry. He enrolled in, um, you know, a couple different mornings. So he's getting up, he's doing um, his affirmations, right? He's going mm. to the gym. He's listening to audiobooks on empowerment and changing his mindset, right? And it's key. And it's like, hey, you can decide whatever you want to do. You know, the beginning of the year is always an empowerment, right? People are going to, they're going to go lose weight. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to do something in the new year, right? The thing is, is you got to have your new year start when your mindset is ready to do that. And you got to stick with it, whether mm -hmm. it's lose weight, quit smoking, you're going to start working out. But if you're going to change your business, you got to, you got to have that mindset for it. And you've got to have that awakening, that wake up mm -hmm. call that says, I'm going to change it. And it can't yeah. be, well, you know, I'm going to do it after, you know, in three more weeks. Someday. You know, procrastinators, yeah. man. Procrastinators. Someday. Yeah. And let me let me just tell you, realtors don't want to work with procrastinators. And by no. the way, I don't want to work with I don't want to work with realtors that are procrastinators either. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, I'll get around. Oh, can you come to our office meeting in um in in in, in May? I'm like, uh wait a second, it's March first. I'm like, <laughs> May? I'm like, by uh, May, I'm sorry. looking for summer. I'm in the yeah. middle of I've replaced you already by then. Sorry. Yeah, you know, you exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and the thing is, is that, you know, again, you don't want to wait for those people. You know, you no, just no. don't. You don't no. at all. And you've got to move on. It, but the one thing I wanted to say about partners, right? And this is our whole focus of our call today. You don't have to, you don't have to blow off everybody else, right? As I said to our Seven Figure Lender Academy students, I have 10 to 15 core partners that I depend on two loans a month at a minimum, right? Okay. A lot of these are teams. They're not single agents. So I'm two, two loans, please. I, I need, I need you to do that with me at minimum one, right? So a minimum of 10, uh, 12 to 15 deals to 20 deals per person, right? I mean, add those up, do quick math times 10. It's over 200 deals, right? Yeah. Okay. You do, you do it. You do it times 200, you know, 200 deals times your average commission. That's big money. I'm dealing with 10 to 15 people or 10 right. to 15 groups, right, of partners. But I am still marketing 80. I just checked it this morning because I just did my video to send out to everyone for the weekend because we're expecting 12 inches of snow tomorrow here. Um, so, you know, I did a little video about the weather and, hey, you know, let us know if you need anything for the weekend buyers, make sure you, you know, get your snow boots out. Um, you know, that type of stuff. And I sent it out. 87 agents just got my text video, my email video, right? And it will be plugged in on Facebook later to them. Okay. So again, I'm upbeat, but I'm recognizing 87 people. I only work as partners with 15. Right. So let that sink in. I'm marketing the crowd. People yeah. I, I, I like, do not stop marketing the crowd. I'm saying take the majority of your time and put it here because I'd say those 87 people are on my list because I'll get at least one deal from them. So now, Doran, if I do the minimum, if I do the minimum with my partners, right, 200 deals, let's add another 87, 287 deals. Mm -hmm. I mean, Again, it's it's simple math. Everyone goes out and tries to appeal to everybody. You don't need to appeal to everybody. You need to you need to pick the somebody's. Yeah. The somebody's you're going to click with. So, um, should we answer Scott's question here? Because he's he's sure. Very, yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna have to pivot in a couple of minutes anyway yeah. to sign off. So yeah, why don't why don't we yeah. ask that? Where do you find out where to get the top top realtors? So why don't we yeah. answer that so, real quick? 
you know, I'll, I'll tell you the method to my madness when it comes to top realtors or realtors in general. Um, number one, I always put out there, has anybody worked with a great agent that, you know, thinks would, would be a good fit for me? Um, you know, if they didn't use me for the mortgage, but they use a different realtor, that's a great place to start. Um, for top realtors, you want to look at the companies within your sphere of influence or within the area that you concentrate on. For me, I look in each town, right? So I, I live in Massachusetts. I pick the five or six towns around me that I do a lot of business in. And then I just hunt to see who the top realtor is. You can mm -hmm. quickly find out who the top realtors are because they love to give themselves pats on the back on social media, advertising, everything. Right now is award season. You know, all the top companies around me, they're posting all over social media that they're chairman's elite or president's club or president's circle or whatever it is. Right. Right. right, right. I had five different agents from Cobalt Banker last night post that they're in the top 50 in New England. So that's one way to do it. MLS, you have a friend that, you know, uh, has access to multiple listing data in your area, ask them to pull a list for you. Again, one of your core partners should be able to do that for you. Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely. Um, so it ain't hard, guys. There's lots of ways to get the data. It's more about having the will to do it than it being complicated. Because when you're committed, there's always a way. There's always a way to come up with the top dogs in your area. The real question is, what are you going to do and how are you going to show up to make yourself irreplaceable and indispensable such that they make you their exclusive lender and they send you all their business all the time, put you on their speed dial? That's the real question. And if you guys would like to learn more about the secret sauce that we bring to our top producing mortgage professionals who didn't used to be top producers, a lot of them were duds that we made studs, chumps that we made champs by virtue of our proven battle tested system. If you guys would like to learn more about the secret sauce that launched Coach Pete through the stratosphere and beyond, allowed him to work smarter, not harder, earn more money while having more fun and fulfillment and more time off with his family. And you'd like to learn the mechanics, the mindset, and the marketing that allows you to become irreplaceable and indispensable to top producing agents so that you're able to elicit that lifelong loyalty to get them to stick to you like super glue, to be able to call the shots so they're working on your terms, not theirs, so that instead of them interviewing you, you're interviewing them. If you want that kind of power and posture and you are 100% committed to that adding an extra 100K plus per year to your annual income, and you're looking for a more, more elegant, more streamlined, more systematic approach to growing your business, I invite you guys to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough coaching session with either myself or one of our consultants by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. I'm going to type it on the screen there. So again, it's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And what that's going to do, it's going to give you an opportunity to get on the phone with us, to lift up the hood on your business. We'll look at what's working, what's not working, uh, where you're at, where you'd like to be. And if we can help you get there, by all means, we'll show you how. And if not, frankly, we'll be the very first people to advise you to pass on our services. We don't even make offers to 20% of the people we talk to. So not everyone's the right fit. But if we deem that you're the right fit and we can help you, then we'll make you an offer and perhaps we'll decide to work together to help you take your business to the next level, working smarter, not harder. But this is all about exploring whether or not we have the right fit, the right synergy to help you create your breakthrough. So if you'd like to get more clarity than you ever have before and what it really takes to double, triple, quadruple your income while working smarter, not harder, I invite you guys to take advantage of that complimentary breakthrough call. Mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. So uh, thank you, Coach Pete, for hanging with us. Thanks for no your problem. insight, Sounds your uh, wealth of knowledge. And uh, thank you for continually leading by example, continually bringing your best, doing your best, being the embodiment of excellence in everything you do, someone that people can count on day in and day out. Because when you say you're going to freaking do it, you do it and you do it with excellence. So thank you for being the embodiments of excellence, brother. I appreciate you. Awesome, man. Have a great day. Talk to you guys soon. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. So again, this is the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Dorn Aldana and Pete Fakaisen coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. So go forth, take massive action, and bring massive energy, and you'll get 
chances are massive results. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for being with me. Peace.